Listen, I'm not even gonna front on y'all. You can't even tell I had surgery four days ago. Like, you can't tell at all, okay? I did that. Listen, the story that I am about to tell you guys today requires some type of drink, your beverage of choice. This is apple cider. I put it in a cute little wine glass. Whatever your beverage, vice, whatever it is, I'm begging you. So grab a snack and come on back. The, the events that I'm about to share with you today are epic. I've been waiting to share this story for quite some time, like ever since it happened. But because of recent events, I decided like today is the day. So I'm going to take a sip and we are not going to, I'm not going to hold you. Like we're going to get right into it. Okay guys, so... The story that I have for you is very personal, but being that it is the month of October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I decided to share this story with you because usually I would have wanted like a breast cancer walk or something, but COVID has really just put everything on pause. I'm not going on any breast cancer walks this year. It's raining already in October. We haven't even made it through the month. Like, so that's canceled. I kind of put myself together if you guys can't tell, I did have surgery last Friday, which would be the 9th, I believe. Let me check. I am so bad with dates. Yes, I had surgery on the 9th. I'm not gonna say it's clickbait, but it, technically this would be considered a boob job. Let me set the scene for you guys. This story takes place in 2014, and then present day, we'll get there. I was a senior in high school. I was just about to graduate. It was the month of May, and I think the reason why this story even kind of happened is because my sister, if you guys know my family, you can guess which sibling this is, but she hit me with a shopping cart in the grocery store, and that's kind of what like, made all these events start to occur. If you guys don't know, I have boobs. Everyone, <laughs> let me be serious. I am an individual that has to be more cautious about just, you know, breast cancer, African American women are the leading carriers of breast cancer. I don't have a history in my family of ever having breast cancer. Like, I can't even think of, like, second cousins, twice removed, like, no distant relatives, like, none of that. So, this is all kind of new for me and my mom, basically, because she's the one that deals with a lot of this. So, I try to be as knowledgeable as possible, but at the same time, I'm not a person that likes to, like, feed things into the atmosphere. So, I don't, I'm really big on energy, so, like, I don't really share things until after they happen. I have found a lump on my breast and the reason why I found this lump is because it was on the surface and it hurt really badly like you could feel it and it was kind of I wouldn't say it was visible but like I could see it and my mom looked at it like she was like yeah we should probably go get this checked out I believe I had uh, an appointment with my primary care doctor at the time I had a male doctor and he actually passed away so my doctor um, ended up doing an evaluation of me and then he said that I should go see go for like a biopsy or whatever to get it checked out. I went for a biopsy um, and they kind of you know they did the gel area and they marked it and it was kind of determined that I was probably going to need to go see like a surgeon or something about maybe having it removed just because of the size of it. They didn't know what it was and they wanted to make sure it wasn't anything serious. I graduated on June 2nd and the day after my graduation was my graduation was on a Sunday. The day after my graduation, I was actually going to have surgery. This is a critical point because at this time in my life, my great aunt who took care of me growing up, she babysat me, like we were really close. She had just been put on hospice. And so I remember like my graduation day, I ended up going to see her in my cap and gown and we took pictures. I actually have a story time about this that I did years back that I'll link if you guys wanna watch that. I didn't know it until the day of my surgery, but she actually had passed away. And my mom didn't tell me that she passed away because she didn't want me to get freaked out and she didn't want them to like postpone my surgery or anything like that. Like I'm very emotional especially with people that I love, obviously, like anybody else would be. I remember that morning, I had overheard my parents talking, actually. So I actually did know that she had passed away. I just didn't tell my mom that I knew. And I felt like she was kind of hanging on until she saw my graduation because I we had gone back and forth about... It, it's like a long story, but basically, I felt like she held on enough to see me graduate and then... 
that's when she passed away. So me and my mom and my dad that went down to the hospital. The doctor that did my surgery, my mom worked at the same hospital as him and she had worked with him actually like directly. So she was like really persistent about me seeing him. Leading up to the surgery, I am a big Kate Bryan fan. If you guys don't know who Kate Bryan is, she has the book series called Private. I actually have the entire collection. Let me show you guys. So this is the first ever book by her. If you guys are like adolescents or even now, I feel like a lot of this stuff is so relatable, but Private is like my favorite book series ever compared to Click. She also did Click, but she has a different name for that book because her real name's not Kate Bryan. But for this series, her name is Kate Bryan and this is the Private Collection. As you guys can see, I literally have like every single book. And if I don't have it, I was reading them from the library. I was a, such a fan, like to the point where they actually autographed, they went up, came out with a mini series, and the entire like cast autographed my like books and stuff. And then the actual um, author, she emailed me and sent me this like, I, my address is on here. But yeah, she sent me this like whole like letter and everything. So like, y'all, when I say I was obsessed, I was obsessed with this book. One of the books in the collection was talking about purgatory. So like, I was like reading it and I didn't really know what purgatory was until I found out about this book. Like I didn't grow up Catholic. My biggest fear going into this, into the surgery is that I was gonna end up in purgatory. My mom and dad were sitting on the side of my bed that I had already gotten dressed and getting ready to go for surgery. My pastor actually came to like pray over me. Like this was like a big deal because I have never had surgery before. None of my siblings have ever had to have surgery. We never had to be put under, none of that. This was a pretty big deal. So my pastor came and prayed over me and then like he left and uh, I was meeting with the anesthesiologist and he was like giving me my options for like anesthesia like what did he want like what I wanted to do and he's like you can either put a tube down your throat and you know kind of be awake or I can just knock you out and I was like I'm not getting anything put down my throat because like that would be trauma I'm already scared I want to get knocked out but I don't want to be stuck in purgatory he's like um okay I can put you under and then I was like but please I and I started crying at this point and I was like I don't want to end up in purgatory. I'm crying. My mom was crying. The anesthesiologist was looking at me like I was crazy. And he's like, okay, you're not going to end up in purgatory. Like, I, I swear I got you. The do I told the doctor, like, I don't want to end up in purgatory. And, like, all the nurses and everybody, they're like, okay, this girl is weird. And whenever they give you the anesthesia, like, I, rem I see myself taking it. And then I never know when I pass out. Like, it's so weird for me personally. Like, I never am aware that I go to sleep. They knocked me out and then they did the surgery. I, I forget how long it took. My dad ended up leaving. My mom stayed there with me. The first thing that I remember the nurse saving, saying to me, she was like, Hannah, are you awake? Like, do you remember what you were talking about before you went into surgery? And I was like, purgatory? Am I in purgatory? And she's like, Hannah, no, you're not in purgatory. And then she like gave me apple juice and graham crackers. My mom was there. And I at this point, I just told my mom, like, Mommy, did my did um, Auntie Lona, that's my aunt's name, I'm like, did she die? She's like, yes. Like, how did you know? And I was like, I overheard you guys talking about it earlier, but I just didn't bring it up. And then she, we started crying again. <laughs> I think my dad had left my mom there with no car. So my godmother actually ended up picking us up. My godmother is like a road demon. And by that, I mean she drives like me. Like, she's a, she, can, she can whip a skirt, skirt car. I don't know why my mom thought it was a good idea for her to bring me home, but I swear to you guys, she was hitting every single pothole there was. Like the cert, like hitting those potholes, like that hurts. Eventually she slowed down, but like for like the first couple of minutes, I'm like, what is going? Like what are we doing? Um, like this is not a road race. When I got home, my dog like greeted me and everything, and then I didn't take a shower the first day, but I took a shower the next day. I always pass out when I take my showers after surgeries. Recently, I haven't passed out as much just because my mom um, will make me wait longer so that the anesthesia can be out of my system. Because usually when you take anesthesia, they don't have you eat anything, so it's just the anesthesia. And then I don't do good with blood or like needles and stuff like that and like medical stuff. Like, I'm really not the person that does well with that. So when I see things, I get, I get grossed out even just for myself. I remember passing out in the shower and my mom said she heard like a thud and then she like ran to like pick me up or whatever. <laughs> and then like when she was taking me out of the shower, I ended up passing out in the hallway again. So that lump was moved, removed and it ended up being benign. Kind of just like, you know, just watch out, make sure you guys, make sure you're doing, you know, your, 
your checkups every once in a while. Usually when you go to like your OBGYN or your primary care doctor, they do an exam for you, but you're also supposed to do it for yourself. Just do like a, a check, make sure there's no new like bumps or anything. Ended up being was a fibroadenoma and a fibroadenoma, if you guys don't know, it's like a tissue clotting type of thing. I'm not the best with describing medical terms, but pretty much it was just like the size, like this big. Um, and so they just removed it and I didn't have any other issues until recently as you guys know we are in covid and i always make it a point to book my appointments in advance uh, my mom's been a stickler since i turned 18 like my mom no longer books any appointments for us anymore like she won't do it she literally will not call for us to get our appointments so like i've just been accustomed to you know staying on top of it i usually book my appointments in february and then I'm good throughout like, the rest of the year, so like I'll book it in February and then my appointment won't be until September. I was able this year to book my appointment for my primary care doctor, however, I was not able to book my appointment for my OBGYN. Because of COVID, they weren't accepting appointments at the time, so I ended up having to wait till April to book it, and when I went to go book it in April, the doctor that I usually see no longer had any appointments, and so, hold on, I'm getting parched, I need to take a sip was talking to the receptionist she was like yeah so she doesn't have any more appointments in the year 2020 but if you want to just you know book it in 2021 we can do that and i was thinking to myself like ma'am my insurance covers 2020 it covers every single year that's how that's how that's how my stuff set up and so i'm gonna need for you to either book it with somebody else or like like i'm not just gonna miss my appointment especially with covid and everything I was not about to just skip a year and not go see my doctor. So I'm my mom and she told me who she wanted me to see instead of the person I usually would have seen. I booked my appointment with that lady because she had more availability. I'm going to give you guys dates just so that you can stay on track with me because I feel like we're going to get lost. We need to be on the same page so we can understand everything. So on September 8th, I went for my gynecologist appointment. They did like my pap smear, you know, they, they did like a urine sample, and then she also did an, ex an exam. And I want to preference the story by saying that this lady specialized in breasts, so I kind of felt like she was maybe biased, like she was like looking for something to make an issue that technically probably wasn't an issue. So she was checking my area and she was like, um, I feel like you need, like I feel like a lump, like I feel like you might need to go see a biopsy like go get a biopsy and then she had me feel it and i'm gonna be honest with you guys i didn't feel anything at all she ends up booking my biopsy so my biopsy was gonna be on the same day as my primary care appointment which was um september 15th so my primary care appointment was at 3 p.m and then my biopsy was gonna be at um 4 15. i went to my primary care appointment i told my actual doctor that i've seen regularly I actually saw her twice this year because i had you know the fire incident um, and then she was like, oh, like she said she found a lump and then she kind of was just like, I don't feel anything either. So she's like, but you know, it's always better to be safe than sorry. I went to my biopsy appointment and you guys, the vibes in this place were off. A biopsy really is just when they put the gel on like they would use for a pregnancy and they put it on the area that needs to be seen. So that's what like this nurse tech person did and then all of a sudden she just started asking like a bunch of questions kind of alarming to me like i almost like i didn't know if i needed to clinch my pearls i'm like why are these questions coming up she basically was just like has it been red is it draining have there been any discharge um does it hurt like all these questions and i was just like ma'am i didn't even find it i don't even know why i'm here she was okay i'm gonna go talk with the radiologist and she's like don't be alarmed if he comes in the room and so at this point i'm just looking at her like when she leaves the room i just immediately say a prayer like jesus help me that's literally the prayer i always say and i kind of put the situation above me like it's above me it's above me let me please let me it's above me i'm not allowed to let this lady steal my joy the energy was off like it was very eerie and i wasn't really here for that so the nurse and the radiologist come back in the room and he is like yeah so we're gonna go send you for a mammogram mind you guys he never did an examine of the area he never used the um like the, the machine himself to look at anything. He just based his opinion off of whatever it is that she showed him. And she never showed me anything. Still to this day, you guys, I don't even know what it looks like. I don't even know how big it is. Now I'm, I'm asking him like, 
Is there something wrong? He's like, I don't want to say. That's what I'm going to send you for the mammogram. And the nurse is going to set you up. This guy leaves the room. And this lady literally, oh my gosh, she pulls out a breast cancer awareness pamphlet and hands it to me. The audacity. I know what time it is. They want to try to dim my light so their light can shine bright. But you know what? It ain't going to work. The amount of strength courage, woosa, like the, the composure that I had to maintain to not react. I don't have it with me, guys. I didn't even bring it into my apartment. I didn't even want it in my present. I left it in the car, and at this point, I didn't throw it out. She hands me this pamphlet, and she's just looking at me. Like, I feel like she wanted me to, like, cry or something. If there's anything you should know about me, I will not give you a reaction if you want a reaction. I'm not about to give you that. Like, I'm not, I'm not about to give you the satisfaction of you saying you ruined my day. I was holding back the one, two little tears that were about to sprout out of my eyes. I was like, Hannah, head up. Like, she's asked me when I could go for my appointment. I was like, um, it's tax season right now. Like, can we schedule this around all of that? Because I'm not really trying to miss any more work like I I didn't even want to come to this appointment so she ends up um, scheduling my appointment and my appointment was going to be on the 28th and then I was gonna have to go back a couple a week later on October 6th for my results so that was like the appointment when I was leaving the office and then my mom had also went to this appointment with me and she was like when I was telling her what happened, she was like, um, yeah, you're about to cancel that appointment. We weren't, we were not with the vibes. My mom ended up suggesting that I go see the doctors that I usually, that I saw back in 2014. One of the guys, the one that did my first surgery had already retired and the other doctor had done a different surgery on my stomach. So like I was familiar with them. The doctor that did the surgery on my stomach though, he doesn't like to knock me out or give me anesthesia. I ended up booking the appointment with that doctor on the 29th. So I canceled my appointment on the 28th. I canceled my appointment on the 6th. Met with him on the 29th. When I go in for that appointment, he's asking me questions like, so did the radiologist examine you? Like, did he look at the air? I go, no, he didn't do any of that. So now he's like, um, that's odd. Like, I don't understand why he wouldn't have examined you um, to make sh to, to see the area. And he's like, it doesn't really make sense for me to send you off to get a mammogram if there's nothing wrong. So now he's doing everything that the radiologist should have done. He's examining my area, takes out a ruler, like he's he's dotting things off. He's like, all right, two centimeters here at three o'clock. Like, like he's doing all this stuff. And I'm just like, okay. And he's like, all right, I'm gonna go look at the chart that the radiologist looked at. So basically all of these offices are connected under one hospital branch so they can see everything. And then he comes back in the room, he's like, okay, um, and he has like a very comedic dry humor. So we have a couple of options. I don't think it's anything serious. However, I can't really tell what it is. So would you be willing to take like for me to take a sample? And I was like, what does that like? What does that entail? Can you give me the details? He's like, so I'm basically gonna you know take a needle into the area. I'm gonna numb you, and then I'm gonna grab a little sample. We'll put it in a test tube. They'll give us the results on Monday, and then we'll go from there about what you need to do. On Monday, I got a phone call. Monday being October 5th, stating that I was gonna need to have surgery because of my previous surgeries with it he just wanted to take it out and have it removed so that he could do a full diagnosis october 7th i had to go for a covid exam october 9th was my actual surgery so i couldn't eat anything the night before and then i go for my surgery around noonish and you know i'm not really sure what's going on but i was there until 3 45 i was waiting for like at least an hour they had like backtracked the surgery so the unit that i went to was a smaller little surgery section this time they didn't give me any, any anesthesia until i went into the room so i actually felt the room it was like pretty cold and then um, the anesthesiologist was like joking with me and he actually messed up my height. He thought I was 5'3 and I was like, no, I'm 5'5. Five, five. So then he starts looking at the paperwork and I'm like, sir, I did not need to know that you were already making mistakes. Everybody in the staff was nice. It ended up being a 45 minute um, little surgery. A lot of the people that I were seeing that day had worked with my mom at some point. So it was like, I feel like God had kind of just reeled everything in. Um, currently, I've been recovering. I've been doing a lot of icing, a lot of takeout. I haven't been doing much of anything. I'm, I'm filming this video for you guys today. On, um, you can't even tell. Like I don't think you can tell. Like that I'm like 
I'm still recovering. So I guess the moral of the story is to always, always get a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion. You just never know. And it's better to be safe than sorry. And also with things like cancers, it's always best to get a second opinion, especially if you are black in the medical industry. I know it's hard to talk about, but I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say like we do get different treatments sometimes. Like the whole time, the thing that I was struggling with is like how do you go from giving somebody a breast cancer awareness pamphlet to it just being benign and being removed within a matter of four days. Like I'm trying like make it like make it make sense. I'm trying to you know dot every I, cross every T, and I'm just like I'm so confused as to like how and why somebody would do that and put that energy out there. I did not appreciate it, and so that's why I decided to share this story with you guys. This could have gone very left. It could have cost a lot of extra money, unnecessary money that wasn't needed. Like every single time I had to go to an appointment, I was paying copayments, and copayments aren't cheap. Being COVID, I don't know if maybe like she was trying to make up for. And not, you know, having business for seven months. I don't know. I wasn't about to be the test dummy. I have to go for my follow-up appointment next week. So hopefully everything goes well. And yeah, guys, this was just my story time. If you have ever had surgery or a boob job or anything like that, please let me know down below in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed me sharing this story and I hope you appreciated it, being that this is very vulnerable. If you're not following me on Instagram, what are you doing? Make sure you follow me. My handle is Hannah X Cole. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. I've never been mad at you. Remember being broke, I was on you. Now I have you. But keep it a hundred, did you have it? When I